the city of Prague, Czech Republic has a long history with trams. From horse-drawn trams, to these lovely boxy electric trams from the Ringhofer works, to the iconic Tatra T3, to today's newest model, the Škoda 15T. The T3 has already gotten the short documentary treatment, and now, it's the 15T's turn. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing. It's free, and it helps out a ton. Thanks, and on to the video. Arguably, the story of what would eventually become the Škoda 15T starts in the early to mid-90s. At that time, Prague was still being served by old, high-floor Tatra T3s and its derivatives, like the T3 SUCS. The city was trying to move to newer, low-floor trams to accommodate the needs of disabled people, elderly people, and because the T3s were simply getting old. The company contracted for this job was the manufacturer of the aging T3 trams, ČKD Tatra. ČKD Tatra got to work, and in 1993, they presented the first Czech-made, partially low-floor tram, the Tatra RT6N1. However, things got off to a rocky start. Numerous issues befell the new tram model, such as it being extremely loud inside and outside, issues with the bogies and brakes, among others. Fixing these issues, or at least trying to, caused ČKD Tatra to delay the rollout of RT6N1s by three years. In those three years, the prototype's issues have been fixed, and in 1996, the prototype RT6N1 began carrying passengers again in the city of Liberec. In the same year, the prototype RT6N1 moved to Prague and began carrying passengers there. However, the issues came back. For example, there were issues with door motors and the moving platform used by wheelchair users. These issues, combined with Czechade Tatra's bankruptcy in the early 2000s, meant that the Tatra RT6N1 was a commercial failure. During and after the fall of the legendary Czechade Tatra, a new competitor took over the mantle of being the Czech Republic's biggest tram producer. The Plzeň-based Škoda Transportation, a successor of the legendary Škoda Works industrial conglomerate, replaced ČKD Tatra as the largest domestic tram producer. Škoda Transportation came into existence in the 90s, and soon after, it started modernizing T3 trams and producing all new trams for various Czech cities. However, a low-floor tram was still badly needed. Škoda Transportation took on the task, and in 1998, the Škoda 03T began passenger operation. The 03T was an improvement over older tram models, as it was low floor in its central section, allowing for easy access for disabled people, people with strollers, and others. The 03T made its way into numerous cities around the country, but where it was missing is in the capital, Prague. Prague had tested this tram model, but ultimately decided against buying them for its tram system. While the 03T wasn't a complete failure, like the Tatra RT6N1, it surely didn't match the success of previous Tatra tram models, such as the T3 or KT8D5. So, in the early to mid-2000s, Prague stood at an impasse. Would it fall behind the rest of the world and even other cities in the Czech Republic and not adopt low-floor trams, or would it finally step into the 21st century? The first step came in 2004, when Prague started modernizing its Tatra KT8D5s to have a central low-floor section. A good first step, and these trams are still running around the city as of September 2024. Some Tatra T3 models also got a partial low-floor treatment, starting in 2007. However, the biggest leap came in 2006. Aside from modernizing older tram models, Prague felt the need for all new trams, built for the 21st century from the ground up. In the early to mid-2000s, Prague drafted a tender for all new, at least partially low-floor trams. In the end, in 2004, Škoda Transportation won with the Škoda 14T concept. Looking at it, it's a clear design shift from all the previous trams, especially something like the KT8 D5. The faceplate was designed by Porsche Design Group, it was partially low floor, and overall, it looked like a clear step into the future for Prague. Development went by fairly quickly, and in 2005, the tram was unveiled and began testing. Testing went fairly well, and in April 2006, the 14T began regular passenger service. However, as with the previous low-floor tram, issues soon followed. 
These issues were not as prevalent and deal-breaking as with the Tatra RT6 and one but still, they made using these new trams a bit inconvenient. For example, the front door was only used by the driver. There were more pressing issues, notably the increased weight compared to older models and the fixed, non-moving bogies, which wore down Prague's tram tracks significantly faster, especially when the 14T rounded a corner. Another big problem with the 14T's design is this, the seat layout in parts of the tram. Parts of the tram were designed for people to sit across from each other, in an already quite narrow vehicle. This led to the tram car being almost impassable, due to there being not enough space in between the two rows of seats. Because of this, at least from what I've heard, and in my personal opinion, the 14T is one of the most disliked trams in Prague. In the end, Prague ordered 60 14Ts, the last of which were delivered in 2009. The previously stated issues started being addressed in 2016, when the Prague Public Transport Company began modernizing its 14Ts, trying to fix its numerous issues. As of now, all 14Ts underwent numerous changes, and the issues have been addressed. However, the Holy Grail, a 100% low floor tram, was still missing. Just a year after the 14T was ordered, in 2005, Prague awarded another contract for building new trams to Škoda Transportation. 250 tram sets were ordered, for a total price of 19.2 billion Czech crowns or 766 million euros. This time, Škoda Transportation took its time in developing a tram fit for the needs of 21st century Prague. The Škoda 15T was officially unveiled in 2008, and soon after, it began testing. The changes from the 14T were numerous. For example, the fixed, non-rotating bogies of the 14T were completely redesigned to fit the needs of Prague's tram network. The biggest change from all previous tram models is the 100% low floor design of the 15T. Finally, after over a decade of effort, Prague would have a 100% accessible tram, pushing the city's transit system into the 21st century. The seat layout returned to the tried and tested 2 plus 1 across the whole of the tram, except for above the wheels, just behind the driver's cabin and the back. Unlike the original 14T, the windows of which could be barely opened, the 15T's windows could be opened way more, allowing for ventilation during the hot summer months. Unfortunately, the original 15T model wasn't fitted with air conditioning, so the inside of the tram could get really hot in the summer. While there were small issues with the 15T, overall, testing went well, and in 2009, the first trial run of the 15T on Prague's streets began. Just a year later, in 2010, the first ride with passengers happened. This period of testing also went on without major problems, and finally, in 2011, the tram's testing period was officially ended. From that point on, the Škoda 15T officially entered service as part of Prague's tram system. The tram served the city well, with the only larger gripes being the lack of air conditioning and a technical error with the wheels, which required the 15T to be taken out of service for a short period of time. Thankfully, the issue was fixed and the 15T quickly returned to Prague's streets. Through the mid-2010s, Škoda Transportation continued to improve the 15T's design, and in 2015, they came out with a facelifted version of the tram. This version finally included air conditioning and included Wi-Fi connectivity. Although from my personal experience, the Wi-Fi never worked, and in 2020, Wi-Fi access in the new 15T's was shut down. Overall, I like this model better. The air conditioning is much appreciated in the hot summer months, the plastic seats are a bit better in my opinion, and it just feels like the definitive 15T model. The concept of the Škoda 15T tram has found appeal outside of the Czech Republic as well. In 2008, the public transport company of Riga, Latvia, signed a contract with Škoda Transportation to deliver up to 52 15T tram sets, adapted for Riga's rails. As of September 2024, there are 46 15Ts currently operating in Riga. Interest in the 15Ts concept also came from China. In the mid-2010s, Škoda Transportation worked with a subsidiary of the Chinese industrial conglomerate CRRC to adapt the 15T to the needs of the Chinese market. The result, called the Škoda 27T, became the first tram to be powered by hydrogen fuel cell technology, as well as traditional overhead power lines.
the 2070 is currently running around the cities of Qingdao and Foshan. Right now, in 2024, a new tram model for Prague has been announced, the Škoda 52T. Škoda Transportation has been contracted yet again to push Prague's trams forward. The Prague Public Transport Company will buy 40 of them, with options for up to 160 more. Starting in 2025, the Škoda 15T won't be the newest, most modern tram model operating in Prague. However, we are far from the end of the 15T's lifespan. It will most likely continue to serve the city for many more years to come. I think the 15T has been, and still is, one of the most important trams that have ever rolled around on Prague's streets. It represents a paradigm shift from the old, high-floor trams of the past into modern, sleek, fully low-floor trams that we're gonna see more of in the future. In the end, I have to thank the engineers and all the workers of Škoda Transportation for making the 15T happen and for allowing us to move around the city I and a million other people call home efficiently, quickly and safely. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching to the end, you're a real legend. If you'd like to support my work, I have a Ko-Fi page with three membership tiers, all of which bring you sweet benefits, like early access to my videos. There are also affiliate links to the equipment I use to make these videos in the description. Any help would be greatly appreciated. I'd also like to take this time to thank Monday's Last Brain Cell and Aero Martian for supporting the channel with the top membership tier. I can't express how grateful I am for the support. Enjoy the bloopers, this has been Tramly and I'll see you next time, bye! These issues, combined with ch Brrr, ah, bruh. During and after the fall of the legendary ČKD Tatra, a new competitor took o This led to the tram car being almost impassable due to their Really? <laughs> Finally, after over a decade of effort, Prague would have one Prague would have a